Hey, Fonzie! Hey, the Fonzie, yo, they here! When the characters of Laverne and Shirley first showed up on Happy Days, few people watching could have predicted they would get their own spin-off. They came on the air at a time when spin-offs were a great deal more common than today, but the prospect of a spin-off wasn't always a guaranteed success. Laverne and Shirley ended up blossoming into one of the most successful spin-offs in television history. Join Facts First as Penny Marshall revealed the obvious secret about Laverne's outfit. Early on in Happy Days' run, the sitcom introduced a pair of characters who grew to become iconic in their own right. Happy Days premiered in 1974, and its third season featured an episode where the characters of Fonzie and Richie went on a double date with a pair of girls who were much more experienced than they were. They came from the city, and their names were Laverne and Shirley. Of course, the characters were initially only intended to appear in a single episode of Happy Days, but their appearance proved so popular they soon got a spin-off. Stars Penny Marshall and Cindy Williams were relative unknowns at the time they were cast. Penny and Cindy were happy for the chance to appear even just for an episode. When it turned out that paved the way for them to get the spin-off series, they were ecstatic. Laverne and Shirley premiered in 1976 and was a massive hit. Though plenty of spin-offs from that time didn't make it past a handful of episodes, Laverne and Shirley lasted eight seasons. As with the majority of spin-offs, Laverne and Shirley took very little from its parent sitcom outside of the characters. However, they did maintain Happy Days' Wisconsin location. The series followed its two characters as they went about their day-to-day -day lives. They worked relatively blue-collar jobs at a location called the Schatz Brewery, where they could be found capping the lids onto bottles. The show introduced lots of new characters. Besides the characters of Laverne and Shirley, the show also featured a cast of memorable supporting characters. The two most popular were Lenny and Squiggy. They were truck drivers who worked at Schatz Brewery, and they were also Laverne and Shirley's neighbor. In addition, the two could often be found performing in their rock and roll group, dubbed Lenny and the Squigtones. The characters were actually conceived well before their first appearances on television. Michael McKeon and David Lander played the two characters respectively. They came up with the comedic duo while they were in college in a comedy troupe. Besides Laverne, Shirley, Lenny, and Squiggy, the show also made great use of performers Phil Foster and Betty Garrett. Phil played Frank DeFazio, Laverne's father. Meanwhile, Betty Garrett played Laverne and Shirley's landlord, Edna Babish. The characters of Frank and Edna ended up getting together and tying the knot. Another recurring character was Carmine Ragusa, played by actor Eddie Mecca. Though Carmine was introduced to audiences as a love interest for Shirley, he ended up becoming a lovable character in his own right. In the first few episodes of the final season of the show, Cindy Williams quit and Shirley was no more. But the character of Carmine kept appearing more and more until he became a main character. By the end of the show, Laverne was the last character standing. Of the two performers who played the titular characters, it was Laverne's actress who went on to have the more lucrative career. But the character of Laverne might not have had such longevity with audiences if it wasn't for a costume decision that Penny Marshall made early on in production. This video is sponsored by Kamakoto Knives, which are made from high-quality Japanese steel using traditional centuries-old techniques. The first thing I noticed about these knives is the beautiful, heavy-duty ash wood box they come in. Not only is this great for storage, but it makes a great gift for any chef or knife enthusiast. Upon opening the box, I couldn't help but admire the craftsmanship that goes into each knife. Each one is handcrafted by an expert bladesmith, a 19-step process that takes several years to complete for a single Japanese steel knife. Then, each blade is individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee. I had never used a Japanese steel knife until Kamakoto, but even as a casual home chef, I immediately noticed the quality was way better than any knife I'd used before. It's reasons like these that Kamakoto knives are used by Michelin star chefs all over the world. Kamakoto has several special offers going on right now and is offering our viewers an extra $50 off any purchase with the discount code FAXVERSE on top of ongoing special offers. Go to kamakoto.com slash FAXVERSE to get your knives set and help support our channel. Penny made a key creative decision for her character. When it comes to introducing first-time viewers to Laverne and Shirley, there's an easy way you can point out which character is which. That's because the character of Laverne always had an L stitched onto her clothing. 
Laverne's L became so iconic over the course of the show, it became inseparable from the character herself. Some may not realize it was actually Penny Marshall who came up with this costume decision herself. The reason she was so adamant about the embroidery was because she believed audiences might initially have a hard time telling her and Cindy Williams apart without the extra help. Penny and Cindy didn't look all that much alike, but their similar wardrobes and hairstyles made it so that Penny feared audiences might not be able to pick them apart instantaneously. Penny's decision to have an L embroidered on her character's clothing paid off. She ended up being the last character standing. After Laverne and Shirley ended, Penny continued carving out her niche in the entertainment industry. In the 1980s, she transitioned into directing films. How Penny Got Her Start Penny Marshall was born in the Bronx, October 15, 1943. She began tap dancing at a young age, as her mother was a dance instructor. Penny graduated from high school in New York City, but she made the move to New Mexico when it came time to pursue higher education. There, Penny studied for over two years in math and psychology. During her college years, Penny became pregnant with the child of her college sweetheart, Michael Henry, and the pair got married in 1963. Their child was Tracy Henry. However, Tracy later changed her name to Tracy Reiner. Penny and Michael Henry were only married for about three years. After the marriage ended, Penny took herself and her daughter to Los Angeles, where her brother was working in entertainment. At the time, her brother Gary was working as a writer on The Dick Van Dyke Show. With her brother's connections backing her up, Peggy began appearing in some minor acting roles. Her first gig on screen saw her appearing in a Head & Shoulders commercial. In 1971, she married a similarly burgeoning Rob Reiner. That year, Rob got his breakout role in All in the Family. This was another connection that helped Penny slowly rise up in the industry. She appeared in a few made-for-TV films during the early 70s, one of them being produced by Gary. It wasn't long before she received her star-making role of Laverne. Penny became a big-name film director. Though it's relatively common knowledge that Penny Marshall went on to become a big-name film director, some may not realize Penny got her start directing during her time on Laverne and Shirley at the behest of her brother. Over the course of the series, Penny directed four episodes. After the show ended, Penny continued working behind the cameras and was given the chance to helm her own film in the late 80s. She was married to Rob Reiner from 1971 to 1981. Coincidentally, Rob Reiner was also a sitcom star who made the transition to film directing in the 80s. His directorial debut was one of the main reasons that Lenny hardly appeared on Laverne and Shirley during its final season. Michael McKeon played Lenny, though scheduling conflicts arose when Rob cast him in his directorial debut, the classic mockumentary This Is Spinal Tap. Rob Reiner's big screen directorial debut became an instant classic, and so did Penny's. The first one she helmed was Big, which was also the vehicle that made a star out of Tom Hanks. Penny and Tom had a lot of fun working together on Big, so they worked together again on 1992's A League of Their Own. Penny sadly passed away in 2018. She was 75. She's considered a hero among many film buffs today for being a rare female film director who found mainstream success early on. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know it was Penny's decision to have an L on her Laverne costume? Let us know in the comments section below.